Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Climate Action Week assembly. It is so good to see so many of you here um, today to join us. Um, so hopefully you can all hear me really well. Um, and this morning we're going to see all the amazing work that you've been doing during this week. Our First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, will re hopefully be joining pupils in Glasgow to see your work too and to talk to you all. Um, and if that wasn't enough, we'll also be travelling to Sunnyside Primary School in Glasgow, where the running out of time relay that we told you about early in the week, um, that's running all the way from Glasgow, where we had COP26 last year, to Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt, where COP27 will take place this year. That's going to be starting at the primary school later. So in fact, let's head over there now. If um, our wonderful roving reporter Kat is there, let's head over now to Sunnyside Primary and say good morning to Kat and see how she's getting on. Kat, can you hear me? Now we're hoping that the storm, and we know the storm has unfortunately played a little bit of havoc with plans. We were hoping to go to Glasgow Green this morning for the running out of time relay, um, but you'll uh, not, depending on where you are in the country, you'll probably have seen the wonderful Scottish weather has slightly interfered with our plans. Um, so Kat is at Sunnyside Primary School instead. Um, and we'll hopefully be able to talk to her at some point. It might just be she's a little bit um, tied up at the moment, sorting out all the technical issues with having to move location last minute. Um, so if Kat's not there at the moment, what we'll do is we're going to start by recapping all of the amazing things that we've talked about and looked at and done this week. OK, so let's get started with that recap. So you guys have been so busy and what did we learn this week? So in Scotland's Climate Week, we learned so much about climate change and how we can take action to make our world a better place. So we're going to go through a little recap of all the things that we've been learning because we've had four amazing sessions for our upper primary pupils. We had a brilliant session for our early years pupils where they had story time with our author, Minnie Gray. And we had a couple of sessions for our high school students talking about climate justice. So what did we learn? So we learned that our moon, that beautiful orb on the right of what you can see, doesn't have an atmosphere, but the Earth does. So the atmosphere is this select collection of gas that surrounds the planet and what that means is that on the moon because it's not got those gases like a nice cozy blanket protecting it it gets really really cold and really really hot and we learned that it can be so hot that you can fry an egg in a second and so cold that you can freeze it again in another second depending on where you are in the time of day so that's not a really great place to live um, so, but on Earth, we have this blanket, this atmosphere that's full of these greenhouse gases. And if you've ever been in a greenhouse on a sunny day, you know that the, the, it gets nice and warm. And that greenhouse, that lovely greenhouse gases around us keep us nice and warm, nice steady temperature, which is just brilliant. So greenhouse gases are good, but too many greenhouse gases act like a bigger, thicker blanket around the world. And humans are causing lots of greenhouse gases to be released. And so what's happening is the planet is getting warmer. And just like we saw in our early years climate change story as well as what we did in our primary story. So things are getting warmer. And it started about 200 years ago when we started burning lots of coal, oil and gas to power machines and transport. But it's got a lot faster in the last 70 years or so as the number of people on the planet has got bigger and bigger and we've started using more energy and making more stuff. And so we learned as well, particularly from Josh, that on Monday that there were lots of things that we do as humans that release greenhouse gases. 
So lots of start gases are released to make all the stuff that we buy and use. And in our high school session that we learned about all of the places that they released from, as well as our primary sessions, and we learned about lots of damage that they've done to the environment as well. So, for example, when we make something like a pair of trainers, we release lots of these greenhouse gases. Now, can anyone remember any of the gases that are released when we make a pair of trainers? Can anybody remember? Have a think, ask your teachers to maybe pop it in the chat. Any ideas? Oh, we've got some coming in. Any of the gases that are released when we make a pair of trainers? Oh, brilliant. We've got lots of amazing um, answers coming in. Wonderful. And we've got lots of people using the actual chemical um, shortenings as well, which is brilliant. And people remembering some of the actual materials that go into making the, the, the pair of trainers. Really good. I can see so many answers. So you've got them all. So really well remembered, everybody, from earlier in the week. So we've got carbon dioxide, which lots of you have mentioned, and we've got lots of that. So that's not relating necessarily to the trainers, but just in general, we're releasing lots and lots of carbon dioxide. But it's a bit of a, like a thin blanket. It does keep warm the earth up, but it's not a big, thick one. But we've got lots of it, so it's like wearing lots and lots of thin blankets. And then we've got methane, just like lots of you have said. So methane that comes from... Um, from our food waste, from things breaking down, and also from cows and sheep when they burp and fart. And we've got lots of, we've got less methane, but it's a bit of a warmer blanket. And then there's so many of you saying nitrous oxide as well, and we've got less of that, but that's an even thicker blanket around the world. So we're building up these thick blankets. And so do you remember, and we, a few of you mentioned F gases as well. So F gases is another one that we've got even less of, but that's an even thicker blanket. And do you remember what happens when we add all those gas blankets, we put them all around the world? What's happening to the world? Because we're putting so many of these gas blankets out into the atmosphere. What's happening? Oh, I can see some answers coming in. Really good. Well done, everybody. Absolutely. It's getting a lot warmer. Uh, really good. And we've got extreme weather as well. And we, uh, today is a good example of some weather that's not gone quite so well. So we've got these, it's getting a lot warmer for us. And we practice that, our upper primary pupils practice that by trying on all of their um, layers. And Kat in the studio had so many layers on, she was so toasty hot. So that's what's happening. So we need to try and put less blankets on the world so it doesn't get too hot. So what else did we learn this week? So we learned about footprints. So we learned that humans have an impact. They leave a footprint on the world around them. And some of the things that we do in, that we do create that footprint are good, as well as some that are not so good. And we use an example. So we remember, if you remember the example, which was one of my favourite things, we use a chocolate bar as an example. Can anybody remember any of the ingredients that go into a chocolate bar? Anyone remember anything that we put in a chocolate bar? Maybe where they came, where those things came from. Oh, brilliant. Lots of good answers coming in. Uh, and some people remembering as well, we've also got the wrapper as well. So it's not just about the thing that we're eating, it's the wrapper that it comes in that we need to remember. Really well remembered, everybody. And we looked at the footprints, so the map of where all these things come from. And we thought about the things that, that we do that might make this a, more, a worse footprint and do a bit more damage when the chocolate bar is made. And we also looked at when you were talking to Josh, Josh mentioned mobile phones and their footprint and the kind of things, gases and things that release that we might not think of normally. And when we talked to our high school students, we mentioned that sometimes companies who make things like mobile phones try and make them so that they don't last as long. So we keep wanting to buy the new shiny things and keep up with everybody else. And that's causing lots of problems too. But the best bit that we learned when we were talking about footprints 
is that we have the superpowers. We have superpowers to go and change things, to go and change our footprints and make them better. So we had what was called consumer power. So that's just talking about what, what and how much we buy. So we learned we can buy less things and we can buy the right things. We can buy things that have a better footprint. And an even more powerful thing we can do is to use our voices. So not, oh, someone's just remembered voice, brilliant. So we can use our voices and we can speak and we can ask questions. Never, ever stop asking questions. If you're not sure, just ask. And if you're not sure if something's right or not, question it, ask. It's always good to question things and to write letters and to stand up for people who can't stand up for themselves. So we can use our voices. And the best superpower that we have is working together. So we could all work together and really try and help to make our footprints better and help each other to make each other's footprints better and support each other. That's the best superpower that we have. And how then we so after that, we then learned about what we can do to make things better. So we looked at nature and we learned from Claire on Wednesday that um, palm trees are helping to teach us something. Does anybody remember? what palm trees were teaching us what were they what thing that we were trying to build were they helping us with oh you guys are amazing you've got such good memories you've obviously been paying attention that's fantastic so absolutely so our our palm trees are helping us to make turbines more able to withstand strong winds and bad weather so that we don't get them damaged. So we'll let the palm trees really good at standing against the wind. Oh, absolutely. Someone just there said, bend, not break. Exactly. So we can learn that amazing things from the palm tree. And when we had our wonderful story from Minnie Gray for our early years, children, we learned about lots of the other things that trees can give us. And they can help us give us lots of lovely things and they can help make homes for wild animals to live in. So on Thursday, we learned about these animals. So for Mini Grey, we learned that lots of animals that used to live here can't live here anymore because we hunted them and because we didn't they didn't have any homes left. So for Mini, we learned that we need to plant more trees to try and give back these lovely spaces for these animals to live. And we also went on a visit to the Highland Wildlife Park with Jasper and Helena. And do you remember from that, that amazing um, lesson, what animals were that we, we, we're working on projects to try and help some animals come back or do better in Scotland? Anybody remember any of them? Oh, and so I can just see someone saying they planted some acorns this week. Well done. Keep planting trees. I can see some answers coming in. So what animals are we helping? Really good. Wow, so many good answers. So we're helping animals around the world like the snow leopard. But in Scotland, we're helping the wild cat and we're helping the beaver. So with a wild cat and the beaver are being helped to come back. So the wild cat does live here and we're helping them to come to have bigger populations. And we're helping the beaver to come back. So beavers are now in Scotland again. And in our high school lesson, what we learned is that when we work together, we can really make a difference. So we learned from the Highland Wildlife Park that their projects are making a difference. And with our high schools, we learned that humpback whales were really low in numbers because of whaling, because people were hunting them. But the, in the 1980s, they banned whaling and whale populations have gone up loads. So humpback whales are doing much better now. They still need protection, but they're doing so much better. So we learned if we work together, we can make a, the world a better place. So we've set lots of challenges for you this week, and hopefully you've been able to try out some of them. So think back, think of the things that you've tried out, and maybe if you've not tried any, try some and see how you get on. And think about what you enjoyed and what you were good at. And keep doing it. Don't forget that we can't, no one of us is, can do everything, but all of us can do something. So find your something that you liked and you're good at and do that to help the planet. So remember, we can make the difference. 
we can be the difference and we are already being the difference. That's our big message from this week. So that's a wee recap of everything that we've done. We we'll hope that you've really enjoyed the sessions that you've had. So in a minute, we're going to take a look at your amazing work that you've been doing. Um, amazing, all the amazing things that you've been doing. I can see some wonderful messages coming in. And I can also see that we're that um, it looks like Andrea has a very special guest, very exciting, just arriving. So I'm just going to stop my presentation for a second. And. Good morning, Andrea, can you hear me OK? Oh, and I can see, sorry, just Miss Rooney, thank you very much for sharing that you had an amazing litter pick yesterday. That's wonderful. It's so wonderful to hear about all of the things that you've been doing in schools across the country. You've done so much and it's brilliant. So we're just waiting a second just while everything gets sorted and then we'll be able to cross over to St Albert's in Glasgow. Good morning, Andrea. If you can please turn on the sound if that's possible. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Thank you, Andrea. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, we just lost the video there a little bit. That's fab. So what we'll do, hope that looks like our first minister is there and ready and sitting, waiting to watch you, all the amazing things you've been doing this week. So keep an eye out for your school. So I'm just going to get started with the presentation. So hopefully you can you get to see your school. Keep an eye out as you go past and see all the amazing things that everybody's been doing this week.
thank you so, so much for sending in so many amazing pictures. I could see all the wonderful comments that were coming in as we went along. It's so wonderful to see all the incredible work that you've been doing throughout this week, and we're so amazed by all of the things that have been sent in. So hopefully um, everybody at St Albert's enjoyed that, and hopefully we can cross over to there in just a second to see what everybody thought. Thank you so much for all the comments. There's so many things. Oh, we can see of some of the things that you've been doing as well. One Planet Picnics, that's fantastic. So that's us going across to our lovely Andrea. And hopefully we'll be able to have a chat to the First Minister. Hello, everybody. <laughs> So lovely to see you all. <laughs> Hi. I hope you enjoyed that, watching all of that amazing work as much as we did. Hope you had a good boogie along to the music. <laughs> yeah? Were you all having a good boogie? Excellent. Yeah, thank you so much for the lovely messages that are coming in. All the effort, work and effort that's gone into this is fantastic. You so asked me to help me, pictures. Okay. And we're going to cross all, over now to St yeah? Albert's and I'm going to Watch. turn off my microphone. Over your head. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Well, I know all of you can hear me. Can people on the screen? Screen hear me? Yeah, well, let's. We can hear you. I'm here in, well, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys for a big cheer in a minute, okay? Uh, we are joining all of these schools and pupils online, and hello to everybody. I'm here in St Albert's Primary School in Pollock Shields in Glasgow. St Albert's, let's give a big cheer. <laughs> Thank you to. Everybody who's joining us today, I really enjoyed seeing all of the examples of your brilliant work. Uh, you've all been fantastic and I am so impressed with your enthusiasm for saving the planet and making sure that we tackle climate change. I've loved seeing all the solutions that you've suggested, all the ideas you have, your artwork. It is all really, really brilliant. We know that the planet needs our help. We need to save the planet and young people like all of the young people here with me and all of you watching are so, so important to making sure we do that. It's adults like me that have made the mess of the planet and it's young people like you who need to tell us to do more to save it. And it's young people like you who have the ideas for how we best do that. We need to tackle climate change so that we leave to you and to your children and your grandchildren a planet that is fit and healthy and is going to be around for a long, long time to come. So thank you for all the amazing work that you do. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for joining me today to bring Climate Action Week to a close. It's been a fantastic opportunity to showcase all of the great work and ideas that have come from you. So thank you all very much indeed. Uh, here in St Albert's, I'm going to hear a little bit more about the work the pupils here have been doing, but I know how hard all of you have been working. There's a great movement of young people across the world right now that are saying to adults that we need to save the planet and we need to do more and do it more quickly. Uh, you're the future of the world and it gives me huge pride to see so many young people across Scotland making their voices heard. So thank you all very much and keep doing the brilliant work that you're doing. Uh, and now I'm going to ask my friends here in St Albert's to give you a big cheer to say cheerio. St Albert's, come on.
Thank you very much. I knew there was going to be a technical error at some point today. Thank you, everybody, for your help. So thank you so much, First Minister, for joining us today. Thank you so much for all those words of encouragement. And thank you so much for all of you who've shared so much of your amazing work with us today. So just as a reminder, I can see that a lot of you have, have um, been doing so much that we've already asked you to. Um, we've still got a couple of bits, so don't run away yet if you can stay, because we are going to still go to um, Sunnyside in um, Glasgow to see Kat with the start with this um, getting started with the running out of time relay. So if you can stay, we're going to be around for another 10 minutes or so. But just to remember, if you haven't already done so, please go out and do a litter pick if you can. Also take part in our craftivism competition. You saw some of the amazing entries, incredible entries that we've had in already, but so go give it a go if you haven't already. So you can find all the details on our website and also in the resources pack um, that your teachers can access. And we've got an amazing video from the artist Paul Bartlett, um, who's shown us how to do the collages. So if you haven't had a go, it's a really great thing to do. And we'll announce the winners of the craftivism competition next week. So there'll be a winner from our early years to primary three, our upper primary and our high schools. And each of those schools will get a free tour of either the Highland Wildlife Park or Edinburgh Zoo, it's up to their choice. And they'll also get a wildlife camera. So they'll get a camera trap. So that's a camera they can put out in their school grounds and it's sensitive to movement and temperature. And when a wild animal goes past, it captures a little video. That's an amazing prize. So give it a go if you haven't already. And finally, don't forget, if you haven't already, please make a pledge on our Climate Action Schools website. Please go along and make a pledge um, to be a Climate Action School. Get involved in one of the amazing programmes that you can see along the bottom of the screen there. Um, see what you haven't tried yet and give it a go. Find a new challenge. Um, and hopefully now, one more thing that we've got to do this morning is we're going to cross over live to our wonderful roving reporter, Kat. Um, to see her in Sunnyside for the start of the running out of time relay. So hopefully, Kat, can you hear me? So hopefully, Kat will be joining us in just a second. So just while we're waiting, what I'd like to do is I'd just like to say some thank yous just while we're waiting for Kat to come. So thank you so much to all of our partners for supporting our live lessons for sharing ideas and collaborating with us. So that includes Paul Bartlett, our amazing artist, who shared all that wonderful work and the collage video that you should go and watch if you haven't yet. Thank you to our author, Minnie Gray, Scottish Book Trust and Scottish Friendly for our wonderful story, The Last Wolf. And that's on the website. So even if you're a bit older, go and watch The Last Wolf story. It's brilliant for all ages. Also, thank you to um, RZSS, um, and the Edinburgh Zoo and the Highland Wildlife Park and particularly Jasper and Helena for their wonderful lesson and for joining us and for offering the prize for the um, for our collage, the, the wonderful tour that you're going to get if you win. Thank you very much to Porth Valley College and Claire Herbst for coming along and doing an amazing talk um, and Saving Wildcats as well that Helena worked at the Wildlife Park. And what I would like to say a really big thank you to is all our educators, all, you, all of you teachers for engaging with us, helping pupils do their amazing work and being an inspiration for their classes. So everybody at, who's in their schools, give your teachers a big round of applause. Give them a big clap because they've done amazing to get this organised for you. And what we're going to do now, we've got one more. I've got one more thank you and then I'm going to head across to Kat. So thank you to the children and young people across Scotland for listening to our lessons and sending in your fantastic, fantastic, incredible work. Please keep sending it in. It has been a joy to look at. So I'm just going to close this down now because there's Kat in Sunnyside and I'm just going to pass across to her. Hi, Kat. Hi, Nicola. I'm joining you live from Sunnyside Primary School. We have lots of friends with us here today. So hang on a moment, I'm going to turn my camera around. Not like that. There we are. Say hello, sunny side. I want to thank Sunnyside for hosting today because the weather's not what we wanted it to be. So I want to thank all of you for 
taking time out of your assembly today to host us and keep us dry. Thank you so much. Now, as you know, my, uh, my uh, friends on the, lot, on the tablet here, this is Scottish Climate Week. So we've all been learning about climate change in our lessons this week. And remember, we've been talking about the running out of time relay race and that we want you to get involved. Well, today we have with us our friend James here with the baton, who is going to tell us all about the relay as fast as he possibly can. Right. Fantastic. <laughs> Go for Thank it. Thank you very much, guys. It's lovely to meet you all. We've just figured out here together what this is. It is the baton. And this is a very, very special baton because this baton is going to be carried on our running out of time relay all the way from here, Glasgow, to Egypt, Shah, the city of Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. That's over 7,000 kilometers. And to get this baton all that way over land and sea, we're going to need hundreds and hundreds of people to help carry it on the different stages. Now, you've all been doing your work here at Scottish Climate Week. This is the big moment because this baton is super, super, super special because inside of this baton is a message from you guys about demanding better climate education and empowering you guys as the leaders of tomorrow. That's what this baton is all about. And we're gonna make sure that this baton gets all the way from here, starting today, to Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt, over 7,000 kilometers away. That's what we're starting today. We're doing it together. And that the way in which we're going to make this success is all of us working together. And it kicks off here in sunny side school. So what we need you to do is get involved, stay involved and sign the running out of time pledge. And we're going to carry this baton all the way to Egypt. Are you with me? Sunny side, and thank you, James, for showing us the baton and with its very special message. Remember, you can sign that pledge on our website where all of the resources for this week's lessons are. So we'll say bye to you now from Sunny Side. Bye, guys. Bye, Sunny Side. Thank you so much Goodbye. for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kat. Oh, that's so exciting that the running out of time really is now getting going. So that will be running from Glasgow to Sharm El Sheikh. And you can have a look online because it will be running throughout the through from Glasgow south through Scotland. So see if you can go along and watch the relay actually happen. So thank you, everybody, so much for joining us this week. You've been wonderful. Keep sending in your amazing work. We'd love to hear all about it. Keep fighting for climate action. Um, and thank you so much. Goodbye.